so good evening uh, all present here all distinguished uh, guests and attendees students and professional working professional and good morning to all those who have uh, are those who are present from across the globe like from us timing so myself sarendra washne i am the right now adding as a chairman i'm acting as a chairman for this parthagos academic leadership it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, thrilling evening uh, in indian time we are and to here we are gathered all here to listen to uh, sri narayan murthy ji and uh, dr parthagos who really are the legends i would say and their different uh, the, the domains and uh, really they do not uh, need any kind of introduction but to uh, proceed officially I'd like to uh, tell you about before uh, we go into the listen to the uh, both the legends and like to uh, introduce about the little bit on to parthagos academy leadership the academy leadership has started its journey in the last year and uh, we started about international we started the international uh, monthly leadership lecture series and uh, this is the fifth uh, uh, keynote talk under this uh, leadership lecture series and last few of the it was opened by none other than the uh, sri suresh prabhu ji who was uh, our uh, ex uh, union minister minister and then been uh, talks given by mr r gopal krishnan and then uh, professor partha ghosh and dr naresh rayan and today we have with us uh, uh, sri narayan murthy ji and uh, it will be uh, in a conversation style and uh, this session will be moderated by uh, by our distinguished alumni uh, commander vk jetli ji so i request uh, uh, tirlok singh professor tirlok singh uh, who is the co chairman of this academy to introduce uh, uh, commander vk jetli ji uh, thank you professor singh uh, this is my great pleasure to uh, welcome and introduce the the speaker of today's uh, evening uh, mr narayan murthy though he really doesn't require is beyond uh, let's say introduction but as a sake of formality i'd like to introduce him so uh, mr murthy founded uh, infosys in 1981 and this company is today is a highly innovative software services global company listed in on nyse in the us and on bombay stock exchange in mumbai with about Really is a proud figure about uh, 16 billion US dollar in revenue and about 83 billion dollar in uh, in market capitalization. So under the under Mr. Murthy's leadership, Infosys became the leader in innovation in technical, managerial, and leadership training, software technology, quality, productivity, customer focus, employee satisfaction. and physical and technology infrastructure in 2014 mr murthy was ranked 13th among cnbc's 25 global business leaders and listed among the 12 greatest entrepreneurs of our time by fortune in 2012 he has received uh, several awards so just leave uh, a few list you few out legion d honor from france padam vibhushan from india The Economist has ranked him among the top, uh, uh, among the ten most admired global business leaders in 2005, and he has been ranked also among top ten of the Financial Times list of business pioneers in technology. So he, uh, I think, uh, there is several list of uh, awards and other things with Mr. Murthy's. So I would like to just uh, 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 speak out a few. additional points he has also served on the international advisory boards of yale university university of illinois william f uh, stemmer center of for global leadership at the tuck school of business singapore management university asian institute of technology and indian school of business hyderabad so uh, the second speaker thus who is going to have in conversation style is our distinguished alumni uh, professor partho ghos to give you a brief introduction about professor parthagos he is the founder of the uh, parthagos academy of leadership uh, at the iit kharagpur so he is a world renowned thought leader problem solver futurist mentor and professor 
given his wide range of interests arts to science leadership development philosophy to philosophy business to economics theology to technology he is known as a modern day renaissance man over four decades as a former partner at mckinsey and a leader of partha asgos and states he has served heads of multinational and governments on significant strategic and devotional issues in more than 30 countries in asia africa european union north and south america so a true global citizen he is client view him as a creative problem solver and visionary leader so with this introduction i'd like to uh, now pass on this virtual baton to uh, commander jetli ji for further proceeding sir thank you professor washney for giving me this opportunity to speak to two stalwarts one is in india and one is in us one is iit kanpur and one is iit kharagpur and then of course with lot of laurels they had and when i was going through the profile of shri narayan murthy ji and the number of awards he has got i was just feeling as if there was a race between different organizations to award him for his contribution to the whole humanity the number of awards washne ji has only said a few of them i have got the complete list with me and i am not going to go through that list because it will take a lot of time so sir you are a really celebrated celebrity in the field of software technology your contribution to this nation and to the whole humanity will always be remembered india has become super power in it credit goes to infosys to a large extent and number of students passing out from the various engineering colleges or whatsoever they look forward to getting a job in infosys so without wasting any time straight away i come to the a few questions which i have and some people have sent me your journey started in 1981 sir and while you were building up infosys my question is how you as a leader evolved over time and particularly how distinct it had been from being a manager and then a leader which you continue to lead for a very very long time well uh, first of all let me say that it is a big honor to speak at your leadership institute and as big a honor to share the virtual podium with professor gosh who has been a world renowned leadership expert now i don't want to use the traditional thing saying you know a leader is about deciding what to do and then a manager is about doing it well that's traditional it's all known so let me speak only about leadership there are three aspect of leadership development the first is the value system second is competence and third is behavioral attributes values come from your family your early teachers your bosses and your role models that's how you develop treating public property with care good work ethic honesty discipline fairness transparency accountability integrity excellence and attention to details now in the behavioral aspect is the openness of one's mind to learn from people better than us and putting in the required effort some of my teachers some of my bosses and some of my 
peers, as my role models in my development of these aspects of leadership development. Let me stop here. They are really pearls of wisdom which you have given to hundreds of uh, audience who is listening to you. Really, so grateful to you. I am really very, very thankful to you for the very first question, the way you have answered. It's really great, sir. Uh, Parthoda, in your work as a management consultant, you have also served a number of corporates and the national leaders across the cultures, various continents. And can you tell some universal takeaways you could suggest in view of particularly what Mr. Narayan Murthy just told us? Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Narayan Murthy. It's a great pleasure to see you again. I think I recall uh, meeting you in 1986, I think. No, I fully agree. I mean, <clears throat> I personally believe having worked literally, as Narayan Murthy knows, I worked in about 30 countries with the CEOs and the prime ministers. Leadership doesn't mean to be a CEO, doesn't mean you have to be heading up something. Leadership is about problem solving being a good citizen and being able to inspire uh, goodness around around you in your ecosystem. Leadership, how it gets expressed in different societies is a bit different. Like when I was in Japan, or I'm with you, we also met in Japan a couple of times. The leadership is all about humility. Leadership is about building consensus. It's kind of what I would call uh, a pull kind of leadership. You pull people towards a higher level purpose. Leadership in the United States, and when you look, think of people like Jack Welch and many others who come into the quote unquote, the leadership arena, the leadership has been more of being decisive, being forceful, being assertive, getting things done. It has not necessarily been to pull, but to push and that which has been appreciated, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, that leadership needs both push and pull, which I will call the Eastern and the Western approach. When I study the Vedic philosophy, the ancient scriptures, it is all about helping people to be better. That's leadership. How do we bring these two aspects of leadership? One is being decisive, being getting things done on the other side, making others feel good and building a consensus. How do we make the right choices? And when they come and fuse together, we see, I would say, the fermentation of leadership. The leaders in the Western world and in India uh, may ask the same question to uh, Shri Narayan Murthy ji, because you have dealt with the clients in India as well as across the world. May I request you to give your opinion about the leadership qualities and the ethos which Indian leaders have with service in the Western world, sir? You know, in terms of competence, I find Indian leaders as good as any. In terms of values, I find them as good as any. In terms of their behavioral attributes that Dr. Gore spoke about, they're as good as any. However, a very important aspect of a leader is the ability to communicate a vision. In the corporate world, everybody speaks English. And I have seen at Infosys, those people who, who could speak very well, who could speak with passion, people who could communicate well, were the people that exalted their juniors much better than those who were not as good in articulation, but they were very good in other aspects. Our leaders have the potential to ex excel on the global scale, and we have seen a lot of them. Dr. Ghosh is one of them. That's where I do believe that environment plays a very important role in the development of leaders. 
my belief is that culture is the most important attribute required for the progress of a corporation or a community or a nation after all let's remember peter drucker once said culture eats strategy for lunch that is so correct in india there is no value for time we take 5 years to build a metro which takes a couple of years this lack of respect for time is so deep in our culture that major projects even in the private sector do not progress as we intend the next reason why our leadership development in india is somewhat slower than the developed world is because we do not provide honest and courteous feedback on the face of a leader or in person which in my opinion is the most important and perhaps the only channel that a leader can use to hear what he or she is doing wrong or right our leaders are not able to perform like leaders in the western world or as japan as uh, dr gosh spoke about is the low productivity of the average indian professional or worker in my opinion these are some of the reasons why the indian corporate leaders have been held back i am being very open very honest very candid thank you sir thank you sir you called a spade a spade beautifully in very nice words you there are a lot of mentors who are listening to you at this time i am sure they will be now little bit encouraged to give frank feedback in a courteous manner to the budding leaders whom they are mentoring as of today Absolutely. you said it beautifully sir now uh, parthoda i want to take your opinion now see narayan murthy ji has achieved so much despite being in india despite being so many drawbacks with the system he achieved all that and i think the environment the system is much better in a country like us for example so i feel it is much easier to achieve those great heights in those countries and when narayan murthy ji achieves those great heights in a place like india i think we all deserve you know should give a big hand to him that what he achieved in india he took infosys to the greatest heights in the world made it a great company and so much of exports to so many countries in the world you know the question is if narayan murthy was outside of india what could he have become maybe the president of the world we need a president of the world who can govern the world the govern the planet better and narayan murthy you could have done a great job the world is looking for one who could govern the planet solve the geopolitical geoeconomic climate equity ethics issues of the world which are very very serious now reflecting on the point narayan murthy made i fully agree it's culture you know when the corporate ceos ask me parth tell me one thing that makes a company a better than company b i said it's management of culture i could not express my talent So I think managing culture is extremely important, and I'm so glad Narayan Murthy pointed it out. Often we do not realize it. Often I've seen in the Indian context, people even at the senior most level say, "Well, Partha, I wanted to do this, but the culture in our country, the culture in my company, do not allow me to do things which I want to do." The leadership is all about responsibility and acceptance of responsibility. I particularly believe in one statement, which is, "If it is to be, it's up to me." And you know, Narayan Murthy made a very interesting point. On one side, we do not value time. We start meetings late. We wait. We enjoy keeping others waiting. 
that is some of sign of power that I was busy. That's why I came late. That habit is very, very visible in India. When you want to solve a problem, people do not go to the roots. They do not go to the roots. They, as you rightly pointed out, we want to quickly adopt an easy solution from the West to the East. But India, there's a tendency that we have to quickly achieve something which takes time. So there again, we become, I think, a bit confused. On one side, we do not honor time. But on the other side, we want to quickly adopt easy solutions from our side. And this is where I feel we need a new kind of a leadership model. And Narayan Murthy is an example, is a model. So I fully agree. Time, 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock. I remember once we arrived in a meeting two minutes earlier, my senior in McKinsey asked, Partha, let's wait outside two minutes. We should arrive at the reception just at 10 o'clock. And we did that. We waited outside for two minutes. The culture is something that we have not addressed. We have to address. And one request I have for the academy is to work on that. You know, we, if we really believe what Narayan Muthi is saying, that we have to call spade a spade, let the uh, academy of leadership do that job. And uh, I think you will agree with me that uh, at Academy of Leadership, since we started this international monthly leadership lecture series, every time we have started dot in time, may I request your advice what this Academy of Leadership, which is one of its own kind at IIT Kharagpur, we are just taking baby steps. It just started on 18 December last year. That means it's not even six months. So can you advise us what all things Academy of Leadership, how it can contribute for the budding leaders in India? I can advise you on how you should run your academy. However, let me tell you the principles on which I established the emphasis leadership in 1999, that is 23 years ago. It may be of some value too, I'm not sure, but it may be that an enduring company must be able to develop successive generation of leaders. These leaders must imbibe the right values, the behavioral attributes, and the competencies required in the company. We further realized that such leadership development happens through two mechanisms. At Infosys, the first tenet of our leadership academy was that our company was our campus. So therefore we said, we wanted our company environment to be like a university. We wanted an environment where any dissatisfied staff member. I believe a university environment is, I have been lucky to have served on the boards of several top quality US universities at Oxford, you know, in Singapore Management University, I am Ahmedabad, many of these. So we said our leadership, our company should operate like a campus. We wanted every potential emphasis leader to fully understand emphasis business and also the rationales for the decisions that the leaders took and the reasons why they failed, if any. The third tenet that we established was that our leaders had to be our teachers. Every leader, every uh, member of the internal board and every functional head 
had to spend at least nine days in a year teaching at the Infosys Leadership Institute in Mysore. Why did we do that? Because we wanted three options. Now, all these 535 people attended courses at different levels. The relationship-based corporation that is deepening harmonious and productive relationship with customers, employees, investors, vendor partners, government of the land and the society. Finance for every leader. Now these classes had theory and interactions on their applications as applied to the context of Infosys. And that is mentoring. Our mentoring system at Infosys was started slightly later in 2003, about 19 years ago. Mentoring was a private relationship between the mentor and the mentee. The mentors also were not bosses in the line of hierarchy. Now, each internal board member had to accept five to six mentor mentees. They could not refuse any mentee as long as the first come first served policy was followed and the total number of mentees was limited to five or six. Uh, sir, my next question to you again is, you had a five uh, decades of uh, glorious uh, innings. And uh, yeah. were there any moments at some times when you felt, oh, God, me, if they would have taught me this thing in my college, I would have dealt it in a different way, in a better way, or something like that? Did you feel any time? As I said before, Inner courage, conviction, honesty, teamwork, fairness, transparency, and accountability are behavioral attributes that are sold in early stages at home by parents, by early teachers, by aspirational bosses, etc. Training programs can make an individual become aware of the value of these behavioral attributes. Narayan Murthy ji had the power to run his company as the hierarchical head of the company. But when you go and train people in the field of leadership, you are not the boss. So what is the secret formula? How do we influence them to learn the tricks of the trade and leadership? It is not the hierarchy of position or titles, but hierarchy of ideas. Did I hear that, Narayan Muthi, right? Hierarchy of ideas, yeah. hierarchy of insights. And I think in serving uh, boards of companies around the world, the only power that I could rely on is the power inside you. What happens, you create a student-like, campus-like atmosphere. I mean, Narayan Murthy touched on all the points. A campus-like atmosphere where the hierarchy of positions becomes irrelevant. You people start appreciating you because of the ideas that you are presenting. Whether I'm 30 years old or 60 years old or 20 years old, whether I'm a junior guy or senior guy, becomes irrelevant. So it could be a company like Sony, it could be a company like GE or a company like Toyota. It doesn't matter as long as at the heart, there are three fundamental beliefs. And I want to share those beliefs uh, with you. The first one, I always felt that a good problem solver should have the courage, the creativity, and compassion. So conviction has been the source of power. It is applied through courage, but your inner power is a continuous process of development, which no one can take away. 
as long as you're using that power to serve society, serve people around you. Because we want to hear Narayan Murthy that you want to hear me, but I recall uh, dinner, uh, a meeting I had with the CEO of a fiber company. They make uh, polymer fibers. And um, in the dinner meeting, this guy mentioned, you know, I was amazed for the, how you and your team fundamentally changed the direction of our thinking. Uh, and you guys talked about situations which we never imagined. And today everyone is talking about it. Where do you, how did you achieve that? So I think leadership is often about connecting dots, which are often not visible, often not very obvious, but connecting dots to make a new pattern become meaningful. And I think uh, just to reinforce, this Academy of Leadership is going to work for the corporate India, for the academicians, for the government offices. We want to bring about a change through this. I would summarize your leadership development challenge using just one statement. Late Robert Kennedy borrowed the words of George Bernard Shaw and said, most people see things as they are and wonder why. I dream of things that never are and then say, why not? This country will have extraordinary leaders in many, many areas. Now, Partho, I want Thank you to you. summarize at the end uh, the total uh, thing which has happened today. It's uh, nine o'clock. Then one or two questions from the audience, I'll just take it up, sir. The discussion today was indeed very rich. Uh, though I have the privilege to meet Mr. Murthy once in five years, sometimes in Boston, sometimes in India, sometimes in Davos. But it's what has amazed me that though we meet every five years, our thought processes merge beautifully. The importance of culture and within that context, Particularly in India, we have to learn how to value time, how to understand problems at the fundamentals, because we often look for cosmetic solutions we have to deal with. The time is precious. Time once gone, we have lost it forever. That's point number one came out. And we have to, in the academy, find a way to have a course on time management. And it's very clear from Mr. Murthy's personality, which I had the privilege to literally observe. And I want to share with you, Narayan Murthy, something which you may not have noted, but I noted. I recall a talk that I was invited to give in Bangalore in 1987 or 88. I don't remember the which year. It was organized by Confederation of Indian Industry. And one thing I noticed when I've spoken in forums like Japan, like China, like South Korea, like Germany, indeed senior management has the habit of taking notes. The third point that came out very loud and clear is it is not the hierarchy of titles, it is the hierarchy of ideas. The fourth point is, I think from today's discussion, what is leadership got defined? And I want to take little bit time to discuss that because that's what was the purpose of this discussion. Leadership is not about being a boss. Leadership is not about being right. Leadership is not about giving orders. Leadership is not about uh, being assertive. Leadership is all about making individuals around you become more valuable to society. Leaders continuously learn, they're resilient, they're adaptive, they develop new perspective, and they have the ability to accommodate alternative views. So that is the fourth point which came out. And the final point I feel I would like to particularly underscore, uh, which uh, Swami Vivekananda used to talk about, and uh, Narayan Murthy's life has demonstrated that, our re real awakening, our real awakening takes place when we dedicate our life 
for exalted purpose. So it is not only for students at IIT, not only for the executives, not only for politicians. We have to find a way to reach to the base of the pyramid. How do we make individuals great? And I'm trying to find the note that I wrote down here. And he talked about there are many kinds of courage, bravery under fire, courage to risk reputation, friendship, and career for convictions that are deeply held. Perhaps the rarest courage of all for the skill to pursue it is given to only very few men. The courage to wage a silent battle to illuminate the nature of the man and the world which he lives in. I will straight away request S.K. Washneji to please give the vote of thanks. I think uh, Sir Trilok Singh is uh, probably... <laughs> Yeah, to look. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Ahead. Okay, thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. So, sir, I am very pleased to give the vote of thanks uh, as a vice chairman of Partha Ghosh Academy of Leadership, IIT Kharagpur. All of us at, at IIT Kharagpur, sir, we are very happy to see you and, and for, thank you for gracing this occasion. And we would love to see you in the campus sometime down the line. And definitely your presence will motivate our students so that they can take up the challenges, especially the cultural time management and frank feedback issues because our IITs build up on the feedback things. So we also improve as a teacher. Also, I would like to thank all the participants for joining us. And I have an announcement for the next monthly lecture series uh, uh, speakers, international speakers. Next talk will be delivered by Dr. Amar Preet Singh Shane, uh, who is the chairman and CEO of Instella Inclusive USA. He is also known as medical technology entrepreneur of USA, and he has uh, developed many medical devices. So would uh, like to invite you to join with us uh, next month. Thank you very much, sir. You're very kind. Give a standing ovation, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really Thank you. Really honor. Thank you. I will log off now. You know, it was such an enlightening talk by Narada Murthy Ji. Very practical. And something which is golden if we follow it. You see, the worst thing in India, in my opinion, is casualness. Sab chalta hai. There is no respect for time. There is no respect for promise you made. And if you speak the truth and you are honest, you are punished. What you said is very correct. Chalta hai attitude is quite prevalent even today. But, but, let me tell you, the things are changing beautifully in this country over the last few years. When I say last few years, uh, I would not like to specify, maybe 8 to 10 years, you can say. Things are changing very fast. And in fact, one of the things which I just saw uh, uh, around 3-4 days back, the trustworthiness of the governance. India is ranked number one in the world. Today, our exports have increased by almost 10 times during the last 8 years. So things are changing in a big way. The bullet train is coming in India. We do fight among ourselves, there's no doubt. Things uh, do happen. But it is such a huge country. We have our problems, I don't deny that. But things are changing very, very fast, sir. Uh, Jaitli Ji has offered uh, a very uh, positive answer. The other thing I feel is that that's the role of the academy. You know, we have to create a culture of timeliness, culture of honesty, yeah. culture of responsibility. So I think uh, there's always room at the top, Jetliji. So we have to create that space that we have to fill up and in the process, create a culture that we are all looking for, but we have to work on it. I'd like to propose the concept of decentralization of leadership, which means leadership is not just at the top of the company, but we in companies can also instill leadership in the departmental heads. 
say so how do we how do we raise how do we decide potential of leaders so in their own departments there are there are internal leaders i i want to quickly respond you know as we mentioned all the way through this uh evening your time morning our time in boston the fundamental focus of our thinking is if it is to be it's up to me it is indeed a humbling experience and thank you commander jetly for putting power of inquiry at play by asking pertinent questions well my question to dr ghosh is as you know that i am on an ambitious mission to co-create a million sustainable livelihood opportunities in rural india by the year 2026 for glory of bharat well the idea is to rekindle hope reinstill confidence and restore dignity of people in rural india so what do you think how it could be done so i think uh, devender my suggestion would be you are on a journey but make that small group create a small group who believes in you who has that all the elements that we discussed today honest with time honest with quality honest with productivity honest with passion honest with creativity honest with courage just eight women the household women they started with how much just 80 rupees or 100 rupees investment and today there are some i think 225 million dollars company today some 1600 crores so and they have given employment to thousands of women all over india yeah uh, no i i just wanted to chime in and uh, um uh, echo my sentiment uh, about the leadership uh, it's more than a question maybe uh, pardon me for making a comment uh, and that is the leaders are not kind of a uh, created by training leaders are those who are first doers they start doing something we started doing something and now suddenly iit gives me a leadership award but really speaking leadership is nothing more than a great doer who rises to the top uh, while he is doing and in in so doing it helps other people either directly or indirectly creating jobs livelihood sustainability some benefit and that's what it is just a comment Thank you very much. We want to create and ensure that we have more Dr. Shahs, more Narayan Murthis, and that's why we are doing this academy. Academy is—it's not saying that you to become a CEO or a head of a company. All that we are saying that how to cultivate that aspiration which Narayan Murthy had and you had in many more individuals. so that given the size of the problem that we are facing in india we need many rajshahs dr shahs and that's all we are saying now thank you very much that and and in that light thank you sir thank you very much and with that i think uh, we will come to the close of the session today so thank you very much thank you very much